proudest day and the proudest time and the, the seat of a rally here because that day and that hour and those minutes I got the butt between my teeth you know I really stood up and was counted and said this is not getting away I remember when we pulled on our helmets and, and, and Donald says to me what are we doing I said we're going for gold bar that's all we said I can still pick to that run that was just the best best run ever Welcome along to Crunching Gears, Let's Talk Rallying, Episode 6. In this episode, I'm joined by Connor Edwards, a photographer to various motorsport publications. Connor, you're very welcome along. Thanks, Kevin. Great to be back. Can't believe yeah. Episode 6 already. That's crazy. And we're kind of, we've lost our third wheel today. <laughs> Adam, unfortunately, wasn't able to join us, but hopefully he'll be back next week again. Uh, so in this episode, uh, uh, all our bumper edition uh, we caught up with uh, Josh McElean. We caught up with the winners from Mayo. Uh, we also spoke with Sarah, Sarah McFadden and then Graham Stewart from Northern Ireland Championship. So it's a, there's, there's a lot to take in again tonight. But I suppose really the most exciting uh, news this week in terms of Irish rally, Josh McElean. Exciting news for him, isn't it? Absolutely. Fantastic. So, uh, once again, Josh has been accepted in the Hyundai Customer Racing Junior Driver Program. So he was accepted last year for the first time. And uh, what do you call it? He's back in the club and a very exclusive club at that. It only consists of four rally drivers and two circuit drivers. Yeah. And like, it's a, it's, you know, it's cracking. We know we can't downplay this because like, this is a worldwide, you know, he's been accepted into this elite group. You know, it's brilliant to see it, isn't it? Yeah, no, it really does. It, it opens so many doors for him. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, with where he's at and complete, you know, with the fact that he, he's going to do a seven round uh, WRC championship this year, like this, this really will help build his career, you know, at that level. Mm-hmm. Um, earlier, I caught up with Josh to ask him about his news. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's obviously a great opportunity to be involved with Hyundai Motorsport Customer Racing again in, in 2022. And, yeah, to build a relationship further from last year and uh building our progress throughout what we made with them and uh yeah okay we have to build quite some new relationships again but this is all part of the game and uh yeah it's, it's quite an honor to to represent uh, a manufacturer brand within the world championship so yeah it's uh it's something i'm looking forward to, to working on throughout the year and in practical terms what access does the Hyundai Junior Driver Program give you? Do you get to work with the Hyundai Motorsport Customer Racing Team and the engineers? Yeah, we have huge uh, communication with the, the Customer Racing Team already. Um, obviously, the engineers are a big part of the, the whole program within the Rally 2 car. And uh, yeah, at the moment, we've got quite a relationship with them because the car is still fresh. And yeah, we were the first ones to do a snow rally in the car. So this was uh, quite an experience to, to continue the relationship with them. And uh, yeah, of course, you, you get advice from the engineers as well as the management within Hyundai. So it's all uh, a building progress. And just out of curiosity, would this mean you might get access to some of the works drivers such as Tanak or Neville? Um, yeah, well, we have to see. Um, obviously, there, there is new management within Hyundai and uh, new management brings new ideas. So, uh, yeah, it would be a, a great opportunity to work with these guys. And, uh, yeah, every uh, every opportunity, I guess, is a, a bonus. And last year, I think it was last autumn, we saw you testing in Italy. Um, was this development work you were doing for the, the customer racing team or were you working on your own car setup? Yeah, I, I suppose this was uh, probably... a. a a good example of what the the junior driver program brings to a junior driver. Um, obviously, it was a test with Timo Sunnen in, in the in the Rally Two car with the customer racing team. So, yeah, it wasn't so much to do with my personal setup. It was yeah, it was getting miles on the car, getting feedback from different drivers, young drivers as well. So, uh, yeah, I think it was more a development test for the actual team than a progressive step for us. And, and Josh, last year you were competing in the R5 Hyundai i20, and this year you have stepped up to the Rally 2 i20. Is there much of a difference between the two cars? Has there been a learning curve for you? Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I would say it's a completely different car. Um, 
the characteristics of the car is quite different in terms of the the chassis and the the movement within the chassis. So uh, yeah, it took a bit of getting used to, especially on tarmac at the end of last year compared to the Spain and the R5 car. So yeah, I think we're we're slowly beginning to adapt to this change, and uh, yeah, it's just uh, another step up from the R5, and to to keep on developing it with the customer racing team is is our aim for this year, and yeah, hopefully everyone progresses out of it. And in addition to Hyundai's, you know, junior driver program, um, you're also part of the Motorsport Ireland Rally Academy. What type of supports are Motorsport Ireland providing you with? Um, yeah, the, the Motorsport Ireland Rally Academy is the, the main bagger and founder of my career so far. So uh, to have their support from from every level is is quite unbelievable. Um, obviously, John Coyne is the, the main bagger behind this program with Sean McHugh directing it. So I think we've uh, established a good relationship so far and we're finding uh, every element of to get to the top. We You have to get it right. And I think they are providing the, the full package together so far. So yeah, long may this continue. And prior to WRC Rally Sweden, we saw you in Sweden for a couple of days pre-event testing in the snow. And you also entered the Roshan Rally in Sweden to get some experience. What was it like driving on snow? Was there much of an adjustment or a learning curve? I believe that was your first time to, to be on snow in a rally car. Yeah, it was it was our first time. Um, you could say we went in at the deep end going to Rally Sweden. Um, it was new for, for the whole team with PCRS and even James, the co-driver. So, uh, yeah, it was uh, quite a learning experience going against the top level of our five drivers in Scandinavia and, and try to compete. But, yeah, we, we got a lot of... Uh, value out of this here and I think you have to go experience Sweden at some point in your career and to do it such early on is uh yeah I think it's huge going forward and and I suppose it'll be helpful with the talk that um they're they're looking at introducing a second snow rally for next year's championship possibly so certainly the experience will will hold to you and you've entered a seven round WRC championship this year with rally Sweden out of the way what other events will you be competing on um, well, our next event is to be Portugal, uh, WRC in May. So, uh, yeah, hopefully we get some mileage before then on gravel and, and possibly a national rally as well. So, yeah, it, it's good to go there. We've got previous experience of, of Portugal from last year. So going into something we know and something we can relate to is, is quite beneficial um, for championship even. So, yeah, and after that, there's Rally Sardinia, so it's not a big gap, so it's all go from there. And uh, yeah, I think we'll take it step by step after that, maybe with Estonia and Finland and, and see where we're at. So yeah, it's good to have a full program in place going forward. And it's probably my first time in my career I can relate to an next rally after one other. So uh, yeah, it's, it's quite uh, good looking forward. And and with having a full program for this year, what is the target for you in WRC Rally Two? Um. So yeah, our, our main focus is the WRC Two Junior category. Um, I'm progressing throughout the year is the main objective, getting experience of the rallies, and and yeah, getting the foundation for probably a, a proper assault next year is is the main main aim. Um, of course, you want to fight for for podiums in WRC Two Junior towards the end of the year and I think if we had had a clean run in, in Sweden we would have been able to do this so uh, yeah I think it's a very realistic objective and uh, something we'll, we'll definitely focus on. Fascinating there to hear from Josh you know and like we also can't forget in this is uh, Philip Case, PCRS you know they've developed a team now that's capable you know of competing there against the best in the world too so you know that's another vi- very vital cog in that whole team as well and, and James Fulton as well too you know we can't forget James as well. So, um, you know, Mayo last weekend, we made our predictions. Mm. <laughs> I suppose we should look at them first of all. Um, Adam had Josh Moffat uh, to one overall, Chris O'Callaghan in the modified, so done well overall. One, one out of two for Adam. Yep. Yeah, uh-huh. Connor Edwards, Robert Barable, and uh, Gary Kiernan. One out of two. Yeah, <laughs> two seconds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I had Josh Moffat, Kiernan or Black. So I'll give myself one and a half. There you go. Not too bad. <laughs> uh, but, you know, what an exciting rally, you know. Um, fantastic event laid on by uh, Mayo Motor Club. Uh, you know, they tried the new format, two stages done four times. Probably made for a wee bit of a long day, but, you know, 
uh, great stages, um, wee bit of everything in the stages for the drivers. You know, some you know crazy flat out stuff, some good technical stuff. Um, you know, uh, chatting to drivers, not they really seem to take to it and enjoy the, the stages. There's no doubt about that. There, um, some great battles down throughout the, the field as well. And blessed with good weather. Were you keeping a tab on things yourself, Connor? Yeah, I was following it online. Um, I, I would love to have been there. It just didn't work out for me with other commitments. But um, I was certainly keeping a tab and watching it. What was the atmosphere like, you know, when you were standing in the ditches? Uh, you know, you can't beat that. Yeah, you know, like, you know, chatting to rally heads, you know, on, you know, and good crowds about, you know, which is great to see. And then round servers again, you know, like that's you miss that buzz, you know, so it's great to, you know, soak it up and you, you know, you really do forget how much you miss it until you're back in amongst it all, you know. So, and I think generally people are just delighted to be back and, you know, normality, whatever that is, you know. So, uh, great to see it. Um, as I say, you know, Robert Barable back, Darren Gas back, uh, you know, great to see these guys back. And, you know, in particular, Robert Barable, you know, he's really putting it up to Josh Muffet there in the, the first slip of stages, especially. And like first time in a rally car since 2019, first time in the polo. I think it, it bodes well there, Josh, you know, um, what can you say? It, you know, from where he left off in Galway, sublime once again, you know, uh, very controlled, you know, um, comfortable looking, you know, I think, yeah, had he another gear when he did it, possibly did, you know. Um uh, yeah, I think I think you used the right word when you said comfortable. Like there's Josh. He he, you know, he he took <clears> the <throat> fastest time in stage one and he won the, the next seven stages. He controlled that lead very well. Mm-hmm. Um very mature, steady drive, and didn't feel or look like he, you know, from what I can understand or hear, that mm-hmm. he was under any major pressure at all. He, he seemed to have a very controlled drive. And you know, there he is after the first round in Galway and now uh, in, he's leading the Tarmac Championship and now after the first round in Mayo he's leading the National Championship it's a great start to the year for him in the in the Hyundai a car that kind of maybe people had written off on the Irish Tarmac scene yeah. over mm-hmm. the last couple of years but you mm-hmm. know he's certainly Josh is showing nope there, there's life in that Hyundai yep for sure for sure so I caught up with some of the the, the winners after the event uh, started off by speaking to Josh Moffat and then the others will follow. Josh Moffat, winner of the 2022 Mayo Stages Rally. How does that feel? Yeah, it's definitely a nice one now. Uh, funny, we've never won this rally before, so it's definitely a nice one, another one on the list. Uh-huh. Good start to both championships for you? Yeah, definitely. It's it's a good start, so you know uh-huh. we'll continue both championships on and, and see how we get on. So West Cork next event for you? Yeah, West Cork and then Bear after that, I think. So. Uh-huh. And then yeah. sort of Ireland and so on then? So on, so on. Right. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Best yeah. luck for the rest of the year. Thank you. I definitely didn't think on Monday or Tuesday when we were talking that we would have had this uh, pace and it's never mind the results. So uh-huh. delighted with it to be fair. Yeah, and car ran faultlessly all weekend, but the stage is suited us. Yeah. Um, which, um, which not bad. Kind of surprised. Yeah. Uh-huh. Happy would be the order just. Yeah. Yeah. And um, what about the polo? Yeah, it seems to be <laughs> like you look at Mary and Evans's times in Galway and even last year and Matt Edwards and Ushin Price like uh-huh. they have it well set up now. It's just a matter of me just getting a bit of seat time under my belt and getting a bit of mileage. And, getting stuck into but now uh-huh. the challenge with Josh yeah the fact that you're able to step in on the first stage and they almost match Josh yeah it says a lot for your ability and the car as well too yeah, that's, that's a lot of things there's confidence in the team um, our pace notes and our and the car driver Paddy and uh-huh. in the car and just everything just kind of just clicked I knew, I knew coming well coming here that the package was good uh-huh. yeah, it's just a matter of that you just Utilising a whole lot of it. Well, so, Monaghan then next for you? Monaghan next for me now, the end of April, and then mm-hmm. Carlo. Happy, happy surely. How would you not be happy with that? Uh-huh. Um, listen, this, I haven't sat in the car with Rob for 10 years, uh-huh. and he hasn't rallied in two years, and this is our first time in this car, so yeah. we can't be any happier, you know. Obviously, you, <laughs> you'd like to have won, but that's, uh-huh. um, we're more than happy with that result there, yeah. you know. And this year so far for you has been a good year too? Aye, it it's, has been a good year. That's three weeks, three rallies. Um, we, we we won in Clarny, but that's a very hollow victory. And uh-huh. last week we won, and here we're second. So Rob, yeah. after breaking my streak, <laughs> <laughs> but if you can keep the podiums going, I listen, I'd be quite happy if we keep the podiums going. Yeah, on, you know. Where's the next event for yourself? Right? Next event for me is Burr with right. um, Daisy. Myself and Daisy going to Burr. Rob's not doing it. Right. Yeah, very happy. Yeah, we had a great day. Um, no drama. Sort of settled into things in the morning and uh, find ourselves in a nice position, and then sort of tried to push on a bit and see how close we could get to, to Josh and Rob. Um, uh-huh. 
so still a bit to find obviously but uh, yeah no we had, we had a lot of fun out there and uh, lovely stages great event yeah Aye, there were good stages and good weather we were blessed with the weather today weren't we yeah it was great like uh, i suppose even like uh, normally whenever there's so much grip and the roads are dry you know it's so hot and yeah <laughs> whereas it was actually quite comfortable in the car um yes. So yeah, it was perfect conditions from, from the get-go. Um, tire choice was a bit of a strange one because it was so cold. Yes. Um, but I think we managed to showcase throughout the day on that one. And uh, mm. yeah. Very good. And what's the plan now for the rest of the year? National Championship? Or? Um, I suppose I probably hadn't planned much beyond uh, today, really. Right. It's one event at a time. Um, but, you know, these sorts of events, the format really suits me at the minute. Uh -huh. um, so, yeah, we'll definitely take a look and see what rounds of the, the national suit. Uh -huh. um, and, uh, yeah, one rally at a time, I guess. So, that was, to start with then, Josh Moffat, followed by Robert Barable, and then Paddy Robinson, who's navigating for uh, Robert, and then finally, Stephen Wright. So, also, like that last weekend, you know, the two wheel drive battle, that was something else, you know. Uh, I don't know, Connor, were you keeping tabs net as well? Yeah, no, it was certainly following. And there was a great tussle now between Gary Kiernan and the Mark II escort and Jason Black and the Starlet. Yeah. And again, another strong drive from Jason Black after his Galway performance. Mm -hmm. Again, putting it up to Gary uh, on the stages. I know there's a few issues for some of them around managing tires and that over the, the you know, the, the dry tarmac, but uh, certainly it was a great fight from what I could see. Yeah, I think, you know, Jason, we talk about, you know, well, uh, there'll be an interview coming up now shortly, but we talk about, you know, that last stage, he went in 0.4 of a second behind and come out, I think, three, four seconds ahead. And he says it was a comfortable stage. He drove every corner that wee bit better, but it wasn't ragged, you know, like so. Uh, and then, you know, Sam Moffat, you know, first time, well, not his first time out in the modified, but, you know, in a modified car, uh, third in the two-wheel drive, and then we shouldn't forget, you know, the, like uh, Carbon and Stuart Darcy too, you know, modified cars as well. Uh, they finished in the top 10. So like all in all, it bodes really well for, uh, you know, I think this is going to be a very exciting championship this year. But without further ado, we'll catch up with Jason Black and get his thoughts on the rally. Some battle you've had today there. Yeah. Oh, I <laughs> unbelievable. Uh -huh. oh, it was a nip and tuck all day with Gary and uh -huh. um, Great crack all day. I'm just glad to come out on top. And that last stage must have been real door handle stuff, wasn't it? No, it was grand. So it was just <laughs> kind of a wee bit every corner, so I just yeah. pushed it on a wee bit. So. No, and you were third well. fastest overall, I think, in that yeah, last stage. Yeah, some were saying that, so uh -huh. you know, good uh, run now. And there was more there, do you think? Well, probably. <laughs> 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 so, what are you thinking next then? Um, West Cork. That was interesting to hear from Jason, especially his claim that he wasn't on the door handles yet, was third quickest on the last stage. Mm -hmm. um, other news this week, uh, Kevin, was uh, Motorsport Ireland announced uh, the Elite Co-Driver Academy editions for this year. So from last year, we have Lorca Moore and Grace O'Brien, and joining them this year is Owen Tracy, Ronan Comerford, and Sarah McFadden. Um, the the Co-Drivers Academy coaches include Rory Kennedy, James O'Brien, and Craig Shinners. And earlier, you caught up with Sarah to get her take on the academy. Yeah, it's an absolute honour. When you look at the calibre of co-drivers that ran in the previous year, it's an absolute honour to, to have my name on it beside them. Yeah, and like, uh, you're joining this year. It's like Grace O'Brien and Lorton Moore, who, who were already on from last year. But you're also joined now by Ronan Comfort and Owen Tracy. Like, Tracy. Yeah. Like that must be such an honour to be yes, selected out of all the co-drivers cool in the country down to that last five. Absolutely, and it's it's great to have the experience of, of Lorcan and Grace who, who were on it in the previous year. They've they've developed themselves from from the academy, and it's great as well to have to have Ron and own and also on the event even in Mayo at the weekend. It was great that we were all connecting and checking in with each other, and it's 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 a really brilliant brilliant thing to be a part of. Yeah. And like you know, you have the likes of. You know, uh, Rory Kennedy, um, Greg Shinners, James O'Brien, like, you know, names that we all look up to and, and admire. Like, to have them there mentoring you must be a fantastic, fantastic opportunity for the likes of yourself. Absolutely. Like it's, it's not every day that you, you get to have that direct contact with the best in the business, mm -hmm. really, at the end of the day. Uh, I suppose when I was adding into the WhatsApp group originally, I, I was fangirl and being added to the WhatsApp group with the likes of Paul Nagel and Rory Kennedy and, and all these people. So it's, it's really brilliant to, to have that wealth of experience there for this for any support that we need. Yeah. 
And you know, up until, you know, in, in your early years, it was predominantly the, your father you sat with. But like that allowed you mm-hmm. to travel the length and breadth of the country, gain vital experience. You've now started to spread your wings a wee bit. Um, you know, you've had some great opportunities over the last few years. Yeah, I've been, I've been very lucky since I started. I had brilliant support from from my family, from my parents. Starting out with dad, it was brilliant. It, it gave me that opportunity to grow and to learn and maybe to not be so afraid to make mistakes, which I think was brilliant. Mm-hmm. I We started out and we thought we might do a couple of events. So it was merely to say that I, I, I had done it. And then I'm a very, very competitive person by nature. And the second I started, that was kind of it. Like it just... It was never really, it was only going to go one way from there. And, and since then, I've it just I wanted to keep going. And we kind of, myself and dad went for the championships in 2019. And we, we did, we got four out of four podiums in the class. And then it was time kind of to start spreading my wings a little bit. And mm-hmm. then 2020 onwards, I've, I've started to spread them a bit and done a few different events, different surfaces with, with different drivers. Yeah. And like, you know, them experiences will stand to you now come in, you know, in the coming year. What do you feel that the, the motorsport and the elite academy, you know, what do you hope to get out from, get out of it? To be completely honest, to, to learn, to get better, this th- there is no better place to do that because where would you have that wealth of experience, performance coaches, nutritionists, mentors, you would you just media help, you just wouldn't get that from anywhere else. And I'm really, really looking forward to the next two seasons to, to get better and that is really what I want to do I, I feel like I'm at a place where I'm good now but I, I want to get better and mm. I want to I suppose get to the top and that's the, the academy is really going to help me do that yeah because you know we've seen what it's done for the drivers and it's now starting to happen for the co-drivers like it's such a fantastic opportunity and to think of you know we always moaned in Ireland about how you know the lack of support for you know young common drivers co-drivers like this is the opportunity that, that everyone needs now to to make them next steps. Absolutely, like you look at the success of of the likes of Josh getting the the high end I seat, and um, mm-hmm. I suppose it's it's such it's such a brilliant opportunity for the drivers for the co drivers, but it, it wouldn't be made possible without the likes of Sean McHugh, the coordinator, and John Coyne for backing it, and and Sport Ireland, Motorsport Ireland. Like it takes a lot to put something like this together, so you have to be very thankful to the people that that put in so much hard work to make this happen. Same yeah. with Greg Shinner's helping developing the co-driver academy to add on to the to the successful driver academy that was there. Yeah, I like you know it's, it's them bike room staff that make this happen. You know, it's not just you know somebody just didn't pull this out of a hat. This had to be developed. It's it's completely new, really, isn't it? Yeah, definitely not. And they, they didn't exactly just go to an event and pick up a couple of co-drivers and be like, mm-hmm. this, this, these are the group we'll go with. We had to go through a, a pretty hefty selection process where we went through exams, tested on pace note writing, interviews, media interviews. So I suppose it, it definitely wasn't just just pulled out of the air. Yeah. And like, where, you know, where do you, have you any plans set in stone for this year or is it, is it still quite open at this stage? Yeah, I was lucky there. It was even before I got on the academy. I managed to get a couple of a couple of things set in stone. So I'll be competing in the Irish Forestry Championship with Ian McCarthy in Class Eleven F Civic. I'll be doing the the ITRC International Championship. We'll be doing that with uh, Andy Heakin. And then I'm kind of going back back to basics a little bit. And I'm, I'm sitting in with Dad this year for for some selected rounds of the National Border and West Coast Championships as well, which is which is really nice. Certainly exciting times ahead for Sarah. Um, and Kevin, also this weekend, it's the second round of the Northern Ireland Championship taking place in Bishop's Court. Uh, it's a 39 stage miles over six stages. It's a 9 a.m. start on Saturday. There's over 80 competitors. And I see also a last minute entry from Philip Allen in the Fiesta R5. And speaking of R5s, that entry list has at least 20, 21, 22 R5s in it. It's amazing. Yeah, like the Northern Ireland Championship, you know, it has really bounced back, you know, the, the, you know, the two-year layoff almost seemed to have benefited, you know, and, you know, the level of PR and one thing and all around that championship at the minute, it's, it's fantastic to see. Um, I caught up with Graham Stewart, who is the championship coordinator earlier, and here's what he had to say. I think so far the way the championship has started off, I mean, there's over over 100 competitors registered for the championship already, you know, we're only one, one round in. Mm-hmm. which was a fantastic event there. North Armagh ran a really good event. And uh, the weather 
wasn't what we were expecting. It actually turned quite a pleasant day for Kirsten. <laughs> so I think generally everybody had quite a good day, you know? Uh-huh. And like, you know, it, the, the way you used to, you used to split the championship, now there's a sealed surface and there's a, a forestry challenge as well. Like that's obviously competitor driven. Uh, well, I think, yeah, we, you know, obviously a lot of, the way the modern rally cars are, et cetera, now, and it, it used to be, it had just changed a few shocks the way you went rallying and the mm-hmm. winds from the back. I think things are a bit progressed a bit more. And I think people have found their own niche, whereas, you know, boys like the gravel love going into the woods, maybe not so keen on the tarmac, et cetera, yeah. and vice versa, plus the time and the cost and resetting cars. And I think that the, the fact that there's over 70 competitors, I say registered for the gravel challenge against over 100 for the tarmac challenge, mm-hmm. you know, the tarmac championship. I think it's shown itself that it's, it's working the right direction. Absolutely, you know, and like there's so many positives around the championship, you know, like with the two uh, uh, circuit based rounds to start with, and then going to go on to the roads. The road closing and for the Northern Ireland Championship has really given it a new lease of life over the last few years. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, you know, you know, the McGrady Endurance and Northern Rally Championship just going from strength to strength. And we see that, I mean, whereas the you know, what competitors have signed on now and registered for the championship is a testament to the way the championship's going. And I think the boys, you know, it does, it sits a lot of competitors love the the, the circuits, the single venues, mm-hmm. and yet there's a lot of boys want to get out on the tarmac too. And it's just I think we'll find the right balance there for that. And it's just a real case of keeping it going and the tar, you know, yet again, I mean, the the, the, same, you know, the, the single venue events between North Armagh and Ballinhead, they run fantastic events and suit the competitors really well. They're getting mm-hmm. good mileage out of the circuits and varying them as much as they can. Mm-hmm. And then you're straight into on the good tarmac stages. And as I say, we all know that finding good stages and it's hard to do, but between the three events that we have, between our own stages, you know, the Maiden City and then the Down Rally. We've got three fantastic closed road rallies to look forward to, you know, and yet again, driven by competitor-friendly events. You know, yeah. it, it can only be a good thing for the sport. Like, Yeah, and, like, you know, all them clubs you mentioned, they're all run by, you know, good competitors who know what the other competitors want, you know, and that that's a vital cog in that wheel as well, too, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah, very, very lucky to have the, the, the events now. I mean, I think traditionally in the past, you'd have found that some clubs would have organised events to sit the club yeah. and to sit the spectator. I think people now have realised that the, the, the competitor is the client and that's where you need to be focusing your aim. Mm-hmm. And it's what the competitor wants is what you need to supply them. And I think, yet again, by the way the entries are going for the event so far, yet again, they've struck a good balance and people have put the faith in the clubs. Mm-hmm. Uh, and as you say, with the competitor... So many competitors now on organising committees has made a big, big difference to the events that they're running. Absolutely. And looking forward now to Bishop's Court coming up now this weekend. You know, another almost, I think it's capacity entry again, once again, you know, so it, yeah. it shows that things are, you know, definitely going the right way. Well, it's definitely the appetite for the rally. And I mean, there's no doubt about it. I've seen it last year whenever the event started around. Obviously, they're oversubscribed when they're just starting. And mm-hmm. I think there was the fear that that was going to fall off yeah. And they weren't going to get the same interest. And and, and, and I think they've been already between Kirkson and now the entry that they have for basic sports just proved to everybody the appetite's there to go rallying. You know, there's, mm-hmm. and I'd say we're a very small nation and, and, and I think there's plenty of people out there who want to go rallying and obviously they're putting their money, their hands in their pockets, paying the entry fee and going rallying. Absolutely. And then, you know, from, you know, from the organisation point of view for the championship, like uh, over the last couple of years there, uh, John McDonald has been doing the PR for the event. And I find it fascinating. He's able to bring out, uh, you know, like almost an old style Patterson's Rally news after every mm-hmm. stage on this, you know, in the circuit based events and even on the tar- on the roads as well. And like, it's not just covering the top four or five, you know, he's, he's getting the wee <coughs> stories from Car 72 or whatever as well, isn't he? You know, so. Well, I, yeah, John's a credit to the, the whole thing on the basis that he knows what, you know, John's a clubman competitor as well, you know, and it's, it's, you know, it's not unknown for Jonathan to take the big Octavia State and the uh, fully forward auto test. You know, <laughs> yeah. so he's he's competing at grassroots level as well, and he, he knows how special it is for people running down the field to you know to mm-hmm. get there just to get a picture there, get a chat with him and RS of it as well as the top mm-hmm. boys who seem to stay all of thunder most of the time. Yeah, but no, I guess he finds a very good you know medium I, between the whole lot. Yeah, because like you know that we mentioned on social media. Could it, you know, spark somebody to, you know, sponsor that guy a set of tires or something for the next event? You never know. Like it's it's wee things well, that make everything, you know, lead to bigger things, I suppose. That's what I'm trying to get at, you know. So. Oh, absolutely. But I mean, I'd say I mean there's something that 
social media, you know, now is such a, such a big thing of everything now, and it's something that we have, you know, need to focus to get. You know, there's you know, there's McGrady Insurance are sponsoring the championship again. You know, mm-hmm. and it's mm-hmm. brilliant to have them on board, and it's just to give them their money's worth as well as to get it out there for the competitors. You know. Mm-hmm. And it's, as you say, it's 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 the ones down the field are paying the same entry fees Absolutely. as the top five, and they deserve the credit that, to be there and yeah. be out there doing yeah. the events. Yeah, and like you know, the uh, sorry, the bishops' court this weekend sponsored by Racing Rally as well. So you know, the fact that you know they're willing to put their money for their mouth is as well. Obviously, a credit to the to the, not only the rally but the championship as well too. So. Well, it's great to see that there's new sponsors coming in. You know, mm-hmm. and as I say, you know. It, it, it's working throughout, and I, I know it's hard. It's you know, it, it all comes down to the, the bottom line for most of the clubs. You know whether they can can run, mm-hmm. but when you've got new sponsors, we're coming in and willing to take a take a grasp at it. I think it's really good for the sport to see that there's new names coming on board. Yeah, and then you know you're also another hat you wear as well as you know you're involved in the the circuit Ireland, which you know we're looking forward to now Easter weekend. Um, that's something that for us to look forward to. There's something exciting news going along there. Well, absolutely. Every you know, every Easter, Easter wouldn't be the same, and it hasn't been the same without the, the mm-hmm. Circuit of Ireland or Easter stages we've had for the last couple of years. But definitely, we're bringing the name back to Circuit of Ireland 2022. We'll be back in form, and mm-hmm. we're very lucky that, uh, that uh, Wastewater Solutions have yet again, this is their third year actually running the event, I mean, with us, and great to have their support, obviously, which helps along with some of the councils and bits and pieces, you know. Yeah. But it's good yet again that. We started off looking at an event there. Um, we have an event in the box that we didn't run in 19 that we'd obviously love to have taken out, but obviously the, the current conditions and et cetera didn't allow it. And for us to use that event to go back this year, I mm-hmm. think <clears throat> would have upset a lot of people because there's a lot of houses and residents that are, despite the majority wanting us back. So yes. we were <clears throat> we went out and when we started looking at stages, we were looking in the position. We didn't know where we would be with lockdown restrictions, etc. Now, thankfully, that's all lifted, but we do have an event that is yet again going to be competitor friendly, good stages, not car breakers, real good, fun, enjoyable weekend at Easter, as, as we hope it should always be. Absolutely, yeah. Because, you know, you know, we didn't know six months ago what climate we'd be in now at this point, you know, so like it's a credit that, you know, that you were willing to take it on and, you know, you were putting in all this effort and it might not even have been an event. Well, say we were very yet again. I mean, a lot of credit to the Northern Ireland Motor Club for running the Ulster when they did. They took a big. Mm-hmm. That was a big, big challenge. You know, it was a big commitment for them to take the run that rally at that time mm-hmm. of year, and it paid off and it proved that a the appetite there was there for rally, Absolutely. and we could do it, and they could run a rally, and it they it gave us the boost to push forward for Easter. And although it's not the multi stages that we want all spread throughout the north, you know, yeah. it's what you know, it's what we had at the time, and we think it's going to be a successful and enjoyable event for everybody based out of Palomina stages up around the Antrim you know so yeah yet again some really looking forward to and man. we're hoping that we we'll still get the weather that we did actually get at least <laughs> uh, it was fantastic to catch up with Graham what like a genuinely nice man there and interesting to hear the plans ahead for the circuit Ireland coming up now at Easter as well so that time of the, the show again I suppose we make our predictions so we'll go with the uh, top three in Bishop's Court Adam couldn't be here, so he sent in his. Uh, he reckons Johnny Greer, Derek McGarty, and then McLaughlin third. So, Connor, what's your thoughts on it? Oh, I don't know. Like that, that top four reads Johnny Greer, Derek McGarty, Stephen Wright, and Darren Gass. Oh, struggling to pick. Like, yeah. you look and at Philip Allen there in there too. And well. Phil, actually, and yeah, you're right. Last minute, Philip mm-hmm. Allen. And if you look at like Mayo, Stephen Wright, Darren Gass had two fantastic drives of Mayo, Johnny Greer as well. It's really mm-hmm. getting to grips with the, the new C3. Oh, pick one, pick one. Okay, I've got to go. Top three would be, I think, in the order that it stands at the moment is uh, seeded. I would say Johnny Greer, Derek McGarry and Stephen Wright. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to go a wee bit different. Well, uh, Johnny Greer, I think, is still, you know, favourite for the one. See that down there, just I think maybe 10th or 11th, David Kelly. I would say he's maybe getting in the bit of seat time before West Court. David has really, you know, settled in well to this uh, Fiesta R5. And then I think Philip Al might sneak a wee third place there, you know, so we'll go with that. Yeah, it's so certainly be interesting to watch. That's definitely going to be, you know. Uh, uh, so that's it once again. So folks, if you could please like, share, comment. Uh, we're quite happy to hear your views. So until the next time, 
Take care, speak soon, and bye. <laughs>